Over the past couple of months, the Linux market share has been on the rise, but the question that a lot of people aren't asking is why is it happening right now? Why didn't it happen six months ago? Why didn't it happen six years ago? Clearly there's something about what's happening right now that's causing this market share to rise. Now, I say market share instead of user base for a couple of reasons. One, it's basically impossible to track the actual user base of an operating system, and two, Market share and user base have a slight difference in meaning and the difference in meaning is very very important to my theory about what's happening. Before we get to the theory crafting, let's just have a look at a few articles. Now I'm sure you've probably heard about this one here. Linux market share doubled last month, stats reveal, and this one was from May. So this is talking about what happened in April. Now in April basically what happened was the Linux market share went up from 1.36% up to 2.87% and the main beneficiary of this was Ubuntu with its usage up 7 times. So from 0.27% to 1.89%. Now I'm not saying these numbers are inaccurate but to not be misled by them you have to understand exactly what they are tracking. So these numbers come from a place called net market share and basically what they track is net usage of things like browsers and of operating systems. So if you don't know, there's this variable in JavaScript called Navigator, and basically Navigator stores things like the operating system that you're on and also your web browser. Now certain security focused web browsers will just not bother with this variable or just put fake information in there, but generally a web browser will report the correct information back. So all you have to do is just take this variable and then send it to a server and then you can keep track of things like the number of hits for Firefox users, for Chromium users, for Windows users, for Linux users, so on and so forth. And then you can do some data analysis on that and try to understand what's actually happening. The reason this is important is because if you never open a web browser on an install of an operating system, it won't be counted in these numbers. Now generally that's not really a thing that's going to happen unless you have, I guess, a VM that exists solely for testing software and you just never open a web browser on it. In that case, I guess you wouldn't be counted, but for most real systems, you are going to be counted. So these numbers are at least fairly representative of what's actually happening in the real world. Whether they're the actual numbers is another question, but they are at least representative of what's actually happening. Now, moving on to this month, the Linux market share has increased again. Now, it went from 2.87% up to 3.17%. Now that might not sound like a big jump, but this is actually really important for Linux because the Linux market share generally hovers around 2%. 3% is supposedly basically without precedent. Now, I don't know the last time this actually happened because the article doesn't have a source here and I couldn't find any information about it, but supposedly it's basically unprecedented. So if that's the case, this is actually a really big milestone for Linux to hit. Now, once again, Ubuntu was the biggest beneficiary of this, so it went up from 1.89% to 2.11%. So, basically, this entire bit of growth right here can be explained entirely by Ubuntu. But the only explanation that's offered by the article here is that the Ubuntu LTS release is just fueling this growth. But I don't really see that as a valid explanation. Sure, it could be a part of it, definitely, and that's one of my explanations I have. But I don't think it can be the entire explanation, because why didn't it happen with the last LTS release, or the one before that, or the one before that? What's special about this LTS release, and what's happening in the rest of the world right now? I do have a few ideas that could potentially explain what's happening, but keep in mind that everything I'm about to say is going to be entirely theoretical. I don't know exactly what's happening, and anyone who says they do, are basically trying to lie to you. Now, let's actually have a look at some of those explanations. The first one is that recently Build 2020 happened, and that is basically Microsoft's developer conference. And this happened around the time the spike started happening. So what is the connection between these two? Well, in this, Microsoft had a big focus on open source software. And whenever you talk about open source software, it kind of puts a spotlight on Linux because it's kind of, I guess, the face of open source. And in this conference, they were talking about things like the new Windows terminal, which I've used, and it basically feels like a Linux terminal. And you have things like more Linux in the Windows Store, and Linux GUI apps with Wayland. Linux GUI apps with Wayland is a really important thing for the WSL users. Basically, if you can use all your Linux GUI apps on Windows, that's going to be a massive productivity boost. And there's other things like Winget, which is the Windows Package Manager. Now, I know there's a bit of controversy about this with where the source code for that application actually came from, but I might do a dedicated video on that. And basically, as I was saying, this kind of puts a spotlight on Linux. 
So maybe some people are trying it out. I don't really see this as being a likely explanation though. As I talked about in that video, if you need Windows for your job and you also need some Linux tools, well now that you can do everything on Windows, you don't really have a reason to try out Linux at that point. I guess there's going to be some people who really like that Linux side of the experience, but for most people, I don't really see this as being something that is actually going to convince them to try it out. I guess now they know more about it, but that's kind of it. Now what about with the lockdown? So there's a lot of people who straight up just don't like Windows, but they have to use it for their job. So now that they're not actually forced to use their office computers, maybe they're trying out something different for their home office. This one I find to be the least likely explanation though, because even though you're working from home and you don't have to use your office computer, you're still going to need those same sort of tools that you use for your job. So whether this be the Microsoft Office Suite, yes, I know LibreOffice is great, but if you need the Microsoft Office Suite, generally you need that document compatibility and just doing it in Microsoft Word is going to be easier. I know LibreOffice is great, I use it myself, but there are times where you need that perfect compatibility. There's other things like the Adobe Suite or there's some CAD tools that you might need on Windows or one that generally you cannot have an alternative for, an accounting tool, because generally the data is going to be stored in a format for that accounting tool and you just have to use that accounting tool. And this is even true for some web apps where they were built with IE7 or some really old version of Internet Explorer in mind and they just don't work on anything else. Which if you don't know, that version of IE was notoriously broken. So if you design something with that browser in mind, it would basically break on anything else. You could get it working if you did a lot of hacking, but with a lot of those tools that are just used internally in a company, most of the time they don't even try. They just write something that works and then just don't worry about the consequences. Now the next one I see as a potential explanation. So you're seeing a lot more non-Linuxy channels actually covering Linux. So you'll have places like Linus Tech Tips and other big tech channels like that who will actually talk about Linux from time to time. And the big use case for this is with Linux gaming, which is getting a lot better. Now I'm not big in the Linux gaming scene, but from what I'm hearing about it, it's been getting a lot better over the past couple of years. And generally when people actually try out Linux, the first place they go to is Ubuntu because most people who don't know anything about Linux, basically there's maybe two distros and now a third that's sort of becoming one that people know about. So you have Arch because of the memes, Ubuntu because that's just all Linux is, and then Pop OS which is coming up for a big gaming distro. So generally when people are trying out Linux, they're going to just go to Ubuntu because that's just what Linux is basically. I don't know whether this could be the entire explanation, but it could definitely be part of it, that's for sure. And the next one I have is about the Ubuntu LTS. So the Ubuntu LTS drops and there's going to be tons of articles about it and there's going to be tons of articles from non-Linux sources, so places like Ars Technica, CNET, The Verge, Wired, and there's going to be lots of videos. So basically, Ubuntu LTS is getting tons and tons of promotion and it's not like usage of the internet is slowing down. So there's more people on the internet, so there's more people reading these articles, there's more people seeing these videos and I think maybe, maybe that could explain why it's growing. I don't think that the Ubuntu LTS just dropping by itself could be the cause, but with this massive marketing campaign that's going along with it, I think that that could also be part of it. Now the next one is about Windows 7. Basically Windows 7 is no longer supported, I'm sure you already know about that, but because of this, there's going to come a point where newer hardware and newer drivers just are not going to work on that operating system. And you're already seeing that with things like the newest version of DirectX. It was never released for Windows 7 and there's going to be more and more stuff like this that just don't come out on Windows 7 and are only being supported on Windows 10. And if you absolutely despise Windows 10, at this point there's really no alternative to use besides Linux. The problem with this though is that maybe some people will try it, but I feel like most people are just going to, I guess, accept that they hate Windows 10 and use it anyway because that's how people felt about Windows 8 and they used it anyway. That's how people initially felt about Windows 10 and they used it anyway. So I don't think that even the people that were holding out with Windows 7 are really going to completely uproot all of the software they use just to switch over to Linux. Now, maybe some people will do it, but I think most people will just accept it and just move on to Windows 10. Now I have one more explanation and this I guess is the least romantic explanation and it's my favourite one. 
So since people are at home, their work computers are turned off. And as I mentioned before, the way these numbers are tracked are basically from hits online with different computers. So what happens if someone has a work computer that's on Windows and a home computer that's on Windows? And in a regular day, they would use the work computer when they're at work and the home computer when they're at home. If one of those computers doesn't get turned on every day, that's one less computer that's online. So could it be that the Linux user base is exactly the same, but because there are less Windows computers turned on right now, it looks like the Linux market share has actually grown. And then if you combine this with the new Ubuntu LTS release with the Linux users testing this out, well, that seems like a pretty good explanation to me. So we have the Ubuntu LTS drop, the Linux users who are already on Linux, who didn't have any interest in Windows, test out the Ubuntu LTS, that hits the internet a lot of times. Now, the Windows users, they use one less Windows computer every day, so now there's less Windows computers that are being turned on. Is this a likely explanation? To me, I feel like it is the most likely. But maybe I'm completely wrong and the Linux user base actually is growing along with the market share and this is just great for Linux software. I guess the other explanation could be that the numbers are just counted wrong, but unlike the time where the Linux market share was at 7% where the numbers were just completely wrong, this doesn't seem as outlandish. So let me know your thoughts down below. I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Peter, the Road, Tony Nono, Kulari, and Zilver. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the Garys in this channel, or anything else you want, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Also remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech of a Tea, available on Library and BitTube, and anywhere you listen to audio podcasts. Also remember to go check out this channel, available on Library, BitTube, and also BitChute, so feel free to watch my content wherever you want to watch it. Also remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out. <laughs>